Hey, Mark. Hello, Hugh. How are you? Hey, everybody. I'm Hugh Brownstone for Three Blind Men and an Elephant. And once again, I'm delighted to have Mark Weir with me from Sony. Thank you, Hugh. Glad to be here. We're at the uh, New York City press event for the launch of the A9 camera. And this is a little different than some people expected. This is not simply faster, but I'm really impressed with some of the ergonomic changes. Clearly, you really have been listening to your customers, and this is a good thing. But I'd like to cover two things with you, Mark. One, I want to talk about the competitive intent of this camera. I want to play back to you several of the things that I heard in this morning's conference. Things like, in essence, DSLRs our 70-year-old technology, which has passed its sell-by date, uh, and this camera proves that with certain capabilities. Uh, I heard language like, the decisive moment in DSLRs was the moment you couldn't see because of the mirror blackout. Uh, and I also heard things like, this camera returns us to the size of traditional Leicas. Now you've also coupled that with this lens, a 100 to 400 millimeter G Master. So the expectation is gonna run very, very high for this capability. And from where I sit, this really looks to me like you are being unequivocal, that is Sony is being unequivocal. This is intended to be a top of the heap DSLR killer for professional sports. What do you think? Well, I think our intention with this camera is to create a camera that meets and exceeds the requirements of professional photographers capturing sports and wildlife and other fast-moving uh, action. Um, I don't. I think our purpose is to really extend what a camera can do by rethinking how a camera is made. Um, we had a panel of professional photographers. Uh, on stage today expressing their points of view, many of which you have just uh, explained. But I think from the standpoint of Sony, what we're trying to do is to use our device technology prowess to create cameras which can exceed what cameras without that de device technology can do. And if we think about it, the heart of this camera is a full-frame stacked CMOS image sensor. That's a, a type of an image sensor which uses a unique structure to be able to read data off the sensor at extraordinarily fast rates. And this is the kind of sensor that you find in the uh, Sony A7R2, the Sony A6300, 6500? Oh no, this is a very different structure sensor. Okay. We've created uh, Stack CMOS for smartphones and we've uh, created it for RX series cameras in a one inch die size. Right. But to increase the size of that structure to full frame is entirely unique. This is the world's first full frame stack CMOS sensor and the, the, the only one of its type in the world. And we're employing this technology simply because the sensor is so much faster than any other full frame sensor that we're able to realize camera capabilities to allow photographers to do things they've never been able to do before. You know, I had the Sony A99 II. You guys were kind enough to let me get on with it for a couple of weeks. And this also seemed like a camera that was using technology, in this case, pellicle mirror, and uh, both phase detect, autofocus on the sensor, and then a dedicated uh, PDAF sensor to do things that a traditional DSLR couldn't. And yet this camera, I'm guessing is faster. Oh yeah, the um, data rate of this sensor is more than 20 times the speed of sensors that we've been able to create before. And what this yields, well it yields many things, but really the standout capabilities are very, very high frame rate of 20 frames per second. Now again, um, we've actually built a camera that can shoot at 24 frames per second the RX100 RX Mark V, V right. but here we have 100 frames per sec uh, 20 frames per second in a full frame sensor. So very, very high capture rate. But more than that, we've sig leveraged the speed of the sensor to dramatically improve the focusing system, not only in its area of coverage, 
but the number of points that it can read, but most importantly, the number of calculations per second it can per, uh, perform. The focusing system can measure subject to camera distance at 60 times per second to be able to not only focus very quickly, but also uh, track moving subjects, erratically moving subjects with a tenacity that really it would be almost impossible to um, realize with a separate AF sensor. So we're doing that on the image sensor so we have the ability to have an extraordinary number of points. It's not 50 or 60 points, it's nearly 700 points and it's covering nine, more than 90 percent of the area of the sensor. This would be almost impossible to do without putting the focusing system on the sensor and it would be impossible to perform it at this rate without the read speed of the sensor. But even more than the focusing system, and again, this is a unique experience for the photographer, is the ability to have a preview of the scene that is uninterrupted by any blackout. I saw that. that. I saw that. I was, I it, was stunned by that. Yeah, it's, it's really a, a, a unique shooting experience for the photographer because they can now be connected to the action in a way in which they could never before uh, by having the preview of the scene interrupted by capture. Up until now, camera technology, whether it's the recording technology of the imager or the uh, means by which the scene preview is created with an optical viewfinder, have always been interrupted because either the sensor needs to be capturing or the mirror needs to be uh, raised uh, to allow the sensor to capture. In this camera, because the read speed of the sensor is so fast, we can actually capture and display preview faster than the human eye can see. And that yields a seamless, uninterrupted view of the scene, which is unique. There is no other camera that can do that. It's extraordinary. And the result is that photographers are always interested in capturing the decisive moment. They can actually see the scene in front of them while the decisive moment is being captured so that they can confirm that they got the money shot in real time. So there's no mirror blackout, a continuous view of the scene in front of you. Not a continuous view of, this, of the images that you just captured. Got it, that's an important distinction. A live preview of what's happening in front of you to be able to connect you with an, the action with an immediacy that no other viewfinder, either electronic or optical, has ever been able to realize. So that's a second characteristic that we've been able to realize. And the third um, is silent shooting. Now, silent shooting is not unique to Sony, and we've realized silent shooting in several of our other cameras. However, the read speed of the sensor will ultimately limit the capability of silent shooting. Typically, it's at lower frame rates or even uh, single shooting. We've been able to leverage the speed of the sensor to realize silent shooting with no interaction of the focal plane shutter at 20 frames per second at full resolution with no interruption of the scene preview through the viewfinder or the LCD. And this combination of frame rate, focus responsiveness, uninterrupted view, and silent shooting is what this image sensor and its read speed allow us to do that no other camera has ever been able to achieve before. So in a way, what we've done is we've leveraged the capability of the device, the solid state image sensor, to essentially replace the need for the mechanisms that SLRs have used for decades, whether they be film SLRs or digital SLRs. I think he's being very nice and a little bit oblique in saying, uh, yes, Hugh, our intent is to kill off DSLRs. I okay. never said that. So, so, but one of the things that I really like, Mark, is that in this version, you've gone beyond the electronics to ergonomics. Mm -hmm. And you and I have talked about this before. Um, on the one hand, it's a pet peeve of mine. On the other hand, to have a peeve at all when the limiting factor really is me as opposed to the, the gear is silly. But with that being said, you've done a really nice job. So it's got a uh, joystick which comes right under the thumb, really easy. You have addressed the ease of recording by putting another button 
easily under the thumb. Uh, so these are terrific things. You now have another knob altogether, a dial on the left side. So it seems like you're taking into account the human element as well. Well, we've listened to professional photographers extensively as we develop the cameras, and we recognize the requirements that they have, particularly when they're capturing a professional event and they're shooting at very high speeds and they really need to depend on their cameras uh, to be uh, extensions of their senses. Um, it's mirrored and reflected in the design of the camera, the human interface of the camera, but it's also reflected in some of the capabilities of the camera. We recognize that uh, professional photographers at sporting events often need to be able to transfer their images instantly uh, to photo editors uh, who may be um, uh, across the field or maybe across the country. Uh, so we've fully equipped uh, the camera with Ethernet and we have an RJ5 jack uh, right. for use um, for FTP capability. Obviously the camera uh, remains fully equipped with Wi-Fi, but we recognize the requirements of photographers who are going to use this as a professional uh, event shooting tool and try to tailor its capabilities to their requirements by listening to their uh, input, their feedback, and not only creating a camera that could do things that will enhance their capabilities, but also the ones that fits their requirements. And along those same lines, you've taken into account very pragmatic issues beyond high-speed transfer to battery life. Mm -hmm. So in addition to a battery that's now twice as big as those in the A7 series, you now also offer a battery grip with two more batteries in it. Sure. Um, again, we've tried to keep this camera true to the ideals that we've established in our previous uh, uh, A6000 and A7 series cameras, it, even though it's attached to a very large lens here, um, uh, it is still half the size and half the weight of any camera in its class. And obviously by cameras in its class, we refer to professional SLRs uh, that can shoot at the kind of frame rate that is required by high performance sports photography and wildlife photography. So uh, it's half the size and half the weight, but even so, in a body that is only slightly larger than an A7, we've developed, uh, again, some additional devices, one of which is a new battery, which is more than double the capacity of the battery that we've used in A7 and A6000 series to extend the shooting life of this camera to nearly 500 shots with a single battery. And then, of course, we also have an attachable vertical grip, which will um, extend that to nearly 1,000 shots. So the kind of uh, continuous shooting and battery life that a pro would expect is something that we've incorporated into this camera. We've also um, created a uh, high-speed uh, quad charger that can power the camera as ah, well excellent. on a continuous basis. Now, before we go, uh, just a couple of questions about what it doesn't do or what it gives up in order to be this capable a still photographer's camera. Let's talk a little bit about what, if anything, is not here on the video side compared to, we'll call it the predecessor cameras or cameras lower down in the range, the A7S2 and A7R2 in particular? Well, there really isn't much. Um, we recognize that professional photographers are often called upon to shoot video. We would imagine that uh, photographers using this camera might be less called upon to shoot video than others, but nonetheless, it is fully equipped for video. It'll capture 4K. It'll capture 4K on the full width of the image sensor without any line skipping or pixel binning, and that puts it in a very rarefied company. There are less than five cameras that can do that. Uh, it'll, it shoots with a Super 35 uh, crop or a full frame. Uh, it can shoot, a, a, it captures 6K frames and over samples into 4K. So it's extraordinarily well detailed uh, video. It can shoot full HD at up to 120 frames per second. Excellent. Uh, it shoots 4K at 24P or 30P. Um, it is not a professional video camera. I mean, we make those as well, but it's not designed. No, no S-Log, for example? So no S-Log. It can't shoot 4K at 60p. Um, but it, it, again, it's, it's equipped quite like uh, our other still cameras, and, uh, and, and we see it as being a very capable video camera. Nonetheless, again, we see its primary focus as being uh, high-speed still photography 
by uh, professional photographers or enthusiasts who are looking to capture the decisive moment in high-speed sports action. Well, Mark, it's, it's another outstanding camera. You are clearly leveraging your core competency in electronics, and I'm looking forward uh, to getting my hands on this tomorrow, I guess. Great. So, thanks so much. Thanks, Hugh. And uh, we'll see you soon. Okay. Guys, for Three Blind Men and an Elephant, Hugh Brownstone, see you next time.